Hey guys, this is Steve Huff at stevehuffphoto.com and I'm here today with the brand new Leica SL. And I have to tell you, you know, when they announced this, the picture of it, it looked like uh, a Sony A7 series body. Let me grab a Sony A7. So here's an A7R2, here's the Leica SL. As you can see, the Leica is bigger but it feels fantastic in the hand. The Sony feels fantastic as well, but you can see the differences right here. And I will state right up front that the EVF in the, in the Leica is the best I've ever experienced, used, seen, etc. It's amazing. This EVF, I was reading a forum this morning and somebody said the camera's worth the price alone just for the EVF. And man, when you look through this thing, it's gorgeous, it's huge, it's clean, it's crisp. Um, people are going to freak out when they check out this EVF. The back of the camera is all simple. It feels like a mini Leica S. So now I get it. Now that the camera's in my hand, I totally understand where Leica's going with this. The 24 to 90, I also have here, right here. It's big, as you can see, but my first couple test shots look pretty promising um, for sharpness, detail, color, that Leica look. The sensor in this is going to give you that nice pop like the Leica Q does. Um, again, the body, it just feels absolutely incredible. So let's sit down and take a closer look at the new Leica SL. <laughs> Okay, before we get talking uh, and discussing the Leica SL, take a look at these. Now here's the uh, Leica SL next to the Leica M. So it's not that much bigger than the M, um, which is really cool. I thought it was going to be like a monstrosity. Uh, and then over here we have the Sony RX10 II, the Sony A7R II, the Sony RX1R Mark II, the Olympus EM10 Mark II, and the Sony RX100 Mark IV. So I have all these cameras lined up. I was checking out the size differences, but today, right now, we're gonna focus on the SL. All right, so here it is. This is the Leica SL from Leica. And as you can see on the bottom, there's no battery door. What's up with that? Um, well, it doesn't come with a battery door because when the battery's in, that acts as your cover. Um, so it's unprotected when you don't have a battery in it, but I guess we would have a battery in it when using it, so that shouldn't be an issue. This is what pops your battery out, and it's kind of like the system on the S, the Leica S. And in fact, this camera is very, very much like a mini S except it's not medium format, it's 35 millimeter full frame. Uh, as you can see, here's the Leica M next to it. Uh, it's not that much bigger than the M itself. So that's pretty cool. And just like the M, you can see a simple back. With the SL, you have even more simplicity. Check it out. It's really, really simplistic sticks with the Leica philosophy of keeping it simple, keeping it pure. You have an amazing, amazing EVF here, guys. Uh, way do you see it. If you get a chance to check out this camera in a shop, at a dealer, uh, whoever, look through that EVF and you will be blown away. Um, you've been reading a lot of hype about the EVF and it's all true, pretty much. What I like about this, now when this was first announced, I kind of wrote my thoughts on my website at stevefoffoto.com and I said, what are they trying to do? It looks like uh, an A7. It looks like they're trying to copy Sony, which is right here. Now, the Sony has a big 35 f1.4 lens on it right now. Now, you can see it does have a square shape like the Sony. It has a little bit of a hump here like the Sony. It has the hand grip, but that's really where the comparison ends. Um, you also have a full frame sensor in both. The Sony having the monster 42 megapixel sensor, 
the Leica only having 24, but in reality, 24 is plenty for anybody. 24 megapixels seems to be the magic number these days uh, for cameras. You go under that and people start complaining it's, it's not enough megapixels. You go higher than that, some people say it's waste and takes too much computer horsepower to process the files. So Leica stuck with a 24 megapixel and I believe, I believe it's the same sensor that's in the Q. And if so, that's fantastic because the Q sensor was damn amazing. Um, better than the M sensor by far, in my opinion. You had much more uh, better color, better pop and snap and details. So this Leica SL is basically what Leica says is they're going after the pro market, Canon and Nikon shooters. Now, I can see that to some degree, um, but I don't see it fully because this camera is not going to do continuous uh, tracking autofocus anywhere near like the pro Nikons or Canons. So right there, you're losing sports shooters. Leica even said themselves that it's not really meant for sports shooting. But wedding pros, studio photographers, portraits, people who have an M or M lenses and they want to use them with this beautiful EVF that's not at all laggy like the one external they offer for the M240. As a matter of fact, after just playing around with the SL, it kind of makes the M240 seem like a dinosaur because when you add on the EVF for live view to this, it gets all laggy and slow and hard to use. Uh, the EVF live view through this is stunning. Um, Leica's been uh, obviously working their butt off creating this camera. So when it, when it came out, I wrote down my thoughts about the specs and I said, this just looks like an overpriced Sony A7 like they're trying to copy off of Sony because Sony is indeed leading the mirrorless market right now. Sony has the market share for mirrorless above anyone else. Um, but you know, now that I have it in the hand, now that I fired off some shots, now that I tried this big 24 to 90 lens, I am absolutely thrilled because I'm eating my words now. This is in no way a Sony copy, okay? Anyone who holds one, shoots one, uses one will tell you that. Um, so it's not. So I correct myself, it's not a Sony copy. Actually, there's nothing quite like this on the market um, because no camera from Canon, Nikon, Sony, or anyone, Fuji, any of them, has a camera that's built to this kind of standard. No one uses a, a display like this. No one has an EVF like this. Uh, this can use M lenses, T lenses, uh, the S lenses and the new SL lenses, of course. So you have the versatility where you can even use like R lenses with an adapter down the road. I'm not sure if the adapter's quite out yet, but you can use any Leica lens ever made or M mount lens. Like imagine the Noct Deluxe with the EVF accuracy. Imagine a lens like the Canon Dream lens on this. This body, while not giving you the uh, low light or ISO performance of something like the Sony a7R2 or Sony a7S2, it's still Leica's best low light camera to date uh, right here. So this is just my first look. Uh, I have the battery on the charger, but I'm gonna throw the battery in here to show you guys the menu system, the shutter um, sound, and basically how easy it is to operate the Leica SL. With this configuration right here with an M lens, say you put like a 28 Elmeret or a 35 Summicron, it's still gonna be um, not so large. Now, of course, it's gonna look large next to the Sony RX1 Mark II, which is right here. So the Sony RX1 Mark II, a beautiful camera that you can slide into a coat pocket and have full frame 42 megapixel performance in your coat pocket. Uh, the Mark II, you have amazing things. I'm gonna have a first look video on this one tomorrow, so check back for that. You put it next to something like an EM10 Mark II, it's gonna be much bigger. You put it next to a Sony RX10 II, it's getting closer, um, not that much bigger. But um, again, the M, it's really not that much bigger. It's bigger, but it's not a huge, huge difference. So let me go get the battery. I'm also going to slap on the 24 to 90 so you can see what it looks like. But I'm excited about this because of M mount lenses and being able to focus them with 
pinpoint accuracy instead of worrying if your range finder's a little out of whack. So let me go get the battery and I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to put the battery in. Here's the battery, it basically snaps into place and there you go, to get the battery out, you flick the switch, which is very solid, tap on the battery and out it comes. Just like on the S, it's amazing uh, the way that it's so streamlined and clean and nice and every part on this body feels professional, it feels solid, it feels like it will last you a hundred years. So let's turn on the camera. Right here is a nice little solid power button. No SD card inserted, I am aware of that. Uh, right now I have the uh, 50 Sumalux, of course, attached. I don't think we're gonna be able to see this. Um, let me try something here. Let me see. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see exactly what the viewfinder looks like because that's an experience that you're gonna have to save for seeing the camera. Um, so here's like a menu mode. So I press the button, I use this jog dial here to go up and down. You can also use this little joystick. Um, so white balance, exposure compensation, drive mode. You can have your user profiles, AF mode, static, dynamic, or auto, which it says face, so I guess that's face detection. Detection, I leave it on static. AF field size, you could do one point field or zone. Exposure metering, of course you have your multi-field center and spot. Exposure compensation, all of the good stuff. But it's not like a bunch of nonsense that you don't need. Um, this is when you have a, a manual lens on. This is your button that you press for uh, zooming in to focus more precise. It does have focus peaking. Um, so you have basically a bunch of... It's, sim it's simplistic. It's very simple to use. You basically throw in your memory card and what's really cool is you have dual slots. So there's enough room to hold two memory cards. So you could literally throw in two 64 gig cards and away you go. On the top, what's really cool is you have this display. It's telling me uh, no card. I have it set to auto ISO, but um, yeah, there's no card in it, so it's not letting me really do much of anything. But the display is cool. The uh, EVF is amazing. The build quality is best that you can get. Um, so now what we want to talk about is, because it's, again, this is only my first look. My full review will come in about two to three weeks. Um, it's going to be in December sometime. But what we want to talk about is the price. So the body only of the Leica SL is $7,500. Woo! Now people are saying, oh my God, Leica's on crack. They're catering to the rich. Um, that's what they do best. That's all they ever do. This is the Leica M P digital mp240 it's like eight grand for this so this is actually um, pretty in line because to me now of course you don't have the M character and rangefinder but to me this is better made better implemented the controls are nicer you got weather sealing you have the best EVF on the market able to use your M lenses with laser precision focusing. Um, you have a professional battery solution, the two SD card slots, amazing video specs that I won't even get into until I do the review. And this is gonna sound weird, but when you look at all of that next to the M, either they're overpricing the M or they underprice the SL. If I didn't know anything about Leica and somebody handed me these two cameras and said, okay, which one would you think is the more expensive camera? I would look at them, shoot them, and I would say the SL would probably be three to 4,000 more than the M. But in reality, it's a little bit less than this M right here. So price-wise, it's actually not uh, crazy being a Leica. Now, of course, you can get the Sony a7R II uh, for 3,200 or so. I think it's 3,200. So you're looking at more more than double the cost for the Leica. So what do you get with the Leica 
that you don't get with the Sony, where you get the massively pro build. Now, feel in comparison, the way these feel, the Leica feels so much better. I have to be honest, I love Sony. I love what they're doing, but the Leica is built to a much higher standard. Uh, EVF, the Sony EVF is fantastic, but the Leica SL EVF blows this one out of the water, hands down. The uh, LCD on the back, while the Leica doesn't swivel, you don't really need it in a pro camera like this. So all the controls um, are solid and pro. There's minimalistic, it's a minimalistic approach. The Leica is weather sealed. You don't get pro weather sealing on the Sony. You get splash guard or something. Um, so the Sony will withstand some light drizzle. The Leica should withstand a freaking hurricane. Um, your battery life is going to be way better on the Leica. You're using a, a professional battery. The dual SD card slots. And I don't know yet about image quality because the Sony is unbelievably good. So I don't know if it'll match the Sony, beat the Sony, if the Sony will beat it. I do think the Sony will beat it in low light. But when you look at them next to each other, you can definitely say in person, okay, now I get it. This is why this camera is $7,500 and the Sony's $32 because um, say it's uh, $4,000 more than the Sony. Is it worth $4,000 more than the Sony? If you're going to use this camera for 10 years, if you're going to use it even for 5 years and enjoy it because that's the most important thing about this hobby, this profession, all the enthusiasts. The most important thing, the holy grail that we search for when we're going through gear is what do I like to shoot? What excites me? What motivates me to get out there? And between these two, if I had to grab one to be motivated, it would have to be this one with this one right behind it. And then now the M I think would be in third place behind the Sony. So um, yeah, so my preference would be SL, A7R2, then the Leica M. That's how awesome this SL is. So I'm eating my words because I kind of downplayed it when I wrote my first article. I was a little upset that it, on paper and in images it looked like an A7R2 copy. But rest easy people, anyone who's ordered one, anyone who's going to order one, I guarantee you this will be the most amazing camera um, for full, full frame 35 millimeter format that you've probably ever held in your hand. The design is actually really, really nice. I love the simplicity and the minimalistic approach. So let me throw on the 2490 real quick before I wrap up this first look and we'll see what it looks like with the monster on hey. it. Here we go. Now the lens, the 24 to 90, uh, I gave it some, some uh, I don't want, know what the word I'm looking for. I was a little disappointed when I read the specs of the 24 to 90 because it's not even a, a constant aperture zoom. It's a variable aperture zoom. So you're going to get between f2.8 and f4, I believe that was what it was. Um, yeah, f2.8 to f4. So you're going to have 24 millimeter to 90 millimeter. So when you're at 90, it's going to be f4. But this lens is over $5,000 for variable aperture 24 to 90. Now, I remember back in the days thinking the, the Canons and the Nikon 2490s were absolutely insane in their pricing. Even the Zeiss for the Sony a7, the 24 to 70 is something like 1300 bucks or something like that. Over $5,000. Now, I threw this on the SL earlier. I snapped a couple of photos and uh, what I saw from the image quality reminded me of a really nice, amazing prime lens. So this lens is obviously probably the best quality 24 to 90 range zoom you'll ever see. Um, it is big, so this is not something I would like to lug out with me on a daily basis. But if I was a shooting pro, if I shot weddings, if I shot portraits, if I did anything like that, this would probably be, in reality, my go-to lens because the IQ rendering of this lens is um, actually pretty amazing. Uh, the color, the bite, the sharpness, the detail. So I can't wait to really get out there and shoot this combination in addition to using M lenses uh, as well. So that's my first look. Oh, let me fire the shutter real quick. So you can see what it sounds like here. Okay. 
you can hear it's pretty quiet. It's got a nice solid thud. It's quieter a little bit than the M. There we go. So it's got a nice solid sounding quiet damped shutter. But that's my first look of the Leica SL. And uh, I will be getting to work on my full review starting today. I'm going to start shooting it over the next few weeks. Uh, I'll have up a first look very soon with some first images and thoughts uh, using it. And then a few weeks later, maybe two, three weeks later, I will have the, excuse me, the full review of the Leica SL where I will compare image quality next to the M240 as well as the A7R2 and we'll throw in some uh, Sony RX1R2 to the mix as well. So there you go, the Leica SL finally arrived. And by the way, um, I did order an SL body for myself. This setup is a loaner, it's on loan to me for review because my personal one, you know, I didn't pre-order it way early because I didn't think I was going to get it. But uh, so mine won't be in for a little while, but this is a loaner um, and I'm happy to be testing it. So there you go. Always check back to stevehuffphoto.com on the internet uh, for full written reviews, tons of samples, all kinds of things, everything photographic, guest reports, user reports, daily inspirations, quick shots. There's all kinds of cool stuff. And look for my Leica SL review soon at stevehuffphoto.com. Thank you. Bye.